Six years ago, Birmingham did the unthinkable by beating Arsenal in the 2011 League Cup final. Sadly for the Blues, they were relegated at the end of that season, but let's focus on the positives and look at who started on that day at Wembley for Birmingham and where they are now. In goal was Ben Foster. After a series of inspirational performances in between the sticks, Foster was named the club's player of the season for the 2010-11 season. Relegation would signal the end of his time at St Andrews, but he wouldn't move far up the road, joining West Brom initially on loan and then making his move permanent a year later. Since then, he's been one of the most consistent keepers in the Premier League, flying the flag for the mid-table stoppers. Right back was Stephen Carr. The defender had initially retired in 2008, but returned to the game a few months later with Birmingham, captaining them to the League Cup trophy in 2011. Carr would remain with the Blues in the Championship, but missed the second half of the season due to a knee injury. After signing a new one-year contract, Carr would pick up another knee injury in pre-season, which would stop him from ever playing again, retiring in the summer of 2013. Since hanging up his boots, Carr has headed out to Spain and is a major shareholder in a range of bars in Marbella, despite being asked to go into coaching. I think he made the right decision to be fair. Centre back was Roger Johnson. He'd been tipped for an England call up before picking up a League Cup winner's medal, so where did it all go wrong for Roger Johnson? After relegation, he joined Wolves and was instantly made captain by Mick McCarthy, but when he lost his job in early 2012, things began to unravel for Johnson. He reportedly turned up to training pissed in March 2012, then Wolves were relegated to the Championship. The following season, Wolves dropped into League One, making it three consecutive relegations for Johnson and he was put up for sale by Kenny Jackett. The defender somehow got a loan move back to the Premier League with West Ham, but that didn't work out and you'll all remember him being embarrassed by Yaya Toure. Released from Molyneux in February 2015, Johnson would head to Charlton on a short-term deal and then the Indian Super League with Pune City. He returned to the Valley in January 2016 but is now looking for a new club after being released this summer. He was alongside Liam Ridgewell. The defender decided that the championship wasn't for him in August 2011 when he handed in a transfer request, but Ridgewell would have to wait to get his way, eventually joining West Brom the following transfer window. A humble man, Ridgewell was pictured wiping his backside with a wad of £20 notes, with almost a grand pictured on the floor. Ridgewell later apologised and stated it was just a joke between a friend and himself. Ha, hilarious. The Banter King would join Portland Timbers in 2014, where he lifted the MLS Cup in 2015. Ridgewell remains with Portland and is set to turn 33 at the end of the week. Left back was Martin Yurinek. The Czech Republic International didn't last long at St Andrews, spending one bipolar season with the club before returning to Russia in the summer with a relegation and a League Cup winner's medal under his belt, joining Tarek Grozny and then Tom Tomsk in 2013. Nowadays, Yurinek is back in his native Czech Republic playing for FK Prib Pribram, and I can only apologise for saying that wrong. In midfield was Sebastian Larsson. A recurring theme, Larsson also left the club following their League Cup win and inevitable relegation, joining Sunderland on a free transfer. The Swede spent six years in the North East, in which he scored some sensational free kicks early on, and then went on to butcher his reputation as a set-piece specialist. He then shouted and whinged at a lot of referees and dodged relegation far too many times and then spent his final two years missing most of the action due to injury. He was released as Sunderland dropped into the championship and aged 32, Larson is currently looking for a new club. Next up it's Lee Boyer. Most people like to focus on Boyer's off and on field discrepancies at both Leeds and Newcastle but they were in the past by the time the League Cup win came around so let's not dwell on them. True to form, Boyer also left St Andrews in the summer of 2011 and joined Ipswich Town in the Championship, scoring two goals in 29 games. After his release, Boyer moved from football to fishing and bought a 12-acre property in the northeast of France, where he had gone carp fishing every year of his adult life, and renamed it Etang de Beau, which translated to Beau's Lake. Back in football, Boyer was recently appointed as Carl Robinson's assistant manager at Charlton. Also in midfield was Barry Ferguson. He played half an hour of the League Cup final with a broken rib, much like a true Scott, but like a true Birmingham player from that season, left in the summer to join Blackpool. With the Tangerines on the slide, Ferguson was appointed player manager in 2014 to help them avoid relegation, and they did just that, dodging the drop by two points. He left Blackpool that summer and was appointed player manager at Clyde. 
With a win record of 39%, Ferguson resigned in February 2017 and is currently linked with the job at Airdrie. Next we've got Craig Gardner. A man who has come full circle, his eight Premier League goals couldn't help Birmingham avoid relegation and he would join Sunderland for 6 million quid in June 2011. He would score some real bangers during a relatively uninspiring spell at the Stadium of Light and Gardner headed back to the Midlands in 2014 to join West Brom. However, the 30 year old is back with his boyhood club Birmingham having made his loan move permanent this summer, working under Harry Redknapp. Up next it's Keith Fahey. Finally another player who stayed with the club for a decent length of time after they dropped into the championship. The Dublin born midfielder was allowed to play in his preferred position of central midfield following the departures of Barry Fergus and Craig Gardner but the next season would be derailed by injury and Fahey would leave the Blues in 2013. He would return to Ireland and play for St Patrick's Athletic and Shamrock Rovers, retiring in 2015 after failing to recover from knee surgery. Fahey's Twitter bio states that he is a retired footballer currently enjoying the fruits. So maybe he's opened up a greengrocer's, who knows. Up front was Nikola Zigic. The lanky Serbian striker was the man to open the scoring that day at Wembley and even after relegation he stayed in the Midlands, although the goals never really flowed. His best season came in his first in the championship where he scored 11 goals, the only time he hit double figures for Birmingham. The 6 foot 7 inch 36 year old was released in the summer of 2015 and hasn't played for anyone else since, but still gets some lovely comments on the old Twitter machine from Birmingham fans. And finally, let's give a special mention to Oberfemi Martins. The Nigerian came off the bench in the final to score the winner and break Arsenal hearts, sending the Birmingham fans in ecstasy with just one kick of the ball. When his loan spell at the club ended, Martins returned to Ruben Kazan and then joined Levante in 2012. Seattle Sounders would be Martins next home, scoring for fun in the MLS to the tune of a nifty little chant from the supporters and in 2016 he followed the trend and joined Chinese Super League side Shanghai Shenhua. Now aged 32, apparently, Martins will always be a Birmingham hero for that one moment in February 2011. So that's where Birmingham's 2011 League Cup winners are now. Let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe and check out our newest channel, HITC7s.